And now it's time for a new Cubase tip video. Hey, what's going on? The Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, before I jump in and share with you those pretty cool Cubase tips, if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe, to click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. And again, for all of you, share and like this video. Okay, now let's start with tip number one, using the draw tool to clip gain an audio event. So let's take this audio event out of the base and let's say I wanna um, you know, lower some part of that event. I can split that up like I showed you in a previous video and create myself a new event and then bring that one down, okay, manually like this, which is pretty useful. And I can also use the draw tool. If I click on the draw tool, I can directly on the audio event start to draw some uh, clip gain automation directly on that event, which is quite cool. So there you go. So this is a very simple way to clip gain like a part of an event without having to split that event into several different events. So just use the draw tool, uh, draw directly on your audio event and you're good to go. Okay, now for the second tip. Um, this one has to do with automation. So I'm gonna open my automation panel by clicking on F6, or you can go into project and go down to automation panel and you'll get to that window. Uh, now, if I go on settings, now if you're not using Cubase 10, you're gonna find settings at the bottom left of the automation panel. Uh, but on Cubase 10, settings is on top, it's a tab. Uh, but we have the same settings anyways. Um, now there's one uh, option here that is called reveal parameter on right, which is very useful. So I would say, check that one on, and then I'm gonna show you what that is gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck it first, Okay, and uh, just try to, I'm gonna try to automate, I don't know, any tracks, it doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna automate this one, go on this uh, end. And, uh, okay, I'm gonna automate the volume fader, okay, by clicking on right, click on play, I'm gonna automate this fader, and there you go, I have my automation going on. If I click on play, it is going on, but I, I don't see it directly on my project window. I'm gonna need to uh, bring the show and hide automation option and make sure volume is the one selected. And then I'm gonna see my automation uh, going on. Now, if I go back to my uh, automation panel, go into settings and click on reveal parameter on right, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna select this other track. I'm gonna do the same on the other track and now you'll see that the automation will show the minute you start automating your setting, whether it's a, uh, um, a volume a fader setting or a plugging setting, it doesn't matter which, uh, whatever you're automating, it is gonna show directly on that automation lane below your track, okay? That simple um, by itself. So it's gonna be very easy to go and tweak that up manually if needed. And also if, uh, for some reasons, uh, you don't see your stereo out channel and you need to automate that to add a fade out, for example, at the end of your mix. Um, usually you're gonna find that channel uh, inside the input and output folder. But let's, you know, let's just bring those out. I'm just gonna de delete those. So let's say you don't have access to that channel. You only see it on your, uh, your mixer, but not on the project window. Uh, very simple, just go on the mixer uh, and just automate it, that's it. You know, bring down the fader, just a quick automation and go back in the project window and you'll see it right away at the bottom. Cubase will bring it back uh, by adding that automation you just did into uh, its own automation lane. So that's simple, but you have to make sure that in the automation panel, in settings, that reveal parameter on the right is checked on. Now, if we go back and look at a um, uh, an audio event, I'm gonna take that snare, okay? Uh, something cool that I can do is I can, you know what, let me change the color of this one. So 
There you go. I'm going to see it a bit better. I can actually move what's inside that event uh, without having to move the entire event by itself. So, for example, if I just uh, take that, uh, if I just take that event, I'm just going to select a new audio event here. Uh, take this one. I just want to move whatever's inside that event by clicking on Control and Alt. I'll be able to move what's inside that audio event, which is quite cool. So this is something that can be useful when editing. Now for tip number four. We saw in one of my last videos, I, to I talked to you about glued events or parts uh, where you use the glue tool to glue a bunch of events together, which then creates like a kind of a folder, which is called parts. Uh, and by double clicking on that part, we get into the part editor where we can edit all those audio events uh, on its own individually and stuff. So if you want to watch this video, I'm going to leave the link on top. Uh, but for this one, now let's say you want to get back to having several audio events and not having um, them grouped in one part. So what you do is you can go into audio, go down to dissolve part, or you can also find that by right clicking uh, on that event and again, go down to dissolve part. Or if you wanna uh, glue them together, you can use the glue tool or also you can click on events to part. That's gonna do the same. So this is uh, tip number four. Now for tip number five. Now this one is a pretty cool one. You select any audio events uh, out of your project and you click on audio and go down to statistics and Cubase is going to list you all the stats related to that audio event from the amount of uh, loudness with uh, LUFS uh, metering, uh, you know, the bit rate, the sample rate, um, even the estimated pitch, which is quite cool. <laughs> so there's a bunch of info you can get out of a, an audio event um, by using this feature. And what you can also do if you want to keep that uh, and note that down, you can just uh, copy to clipboard and, uh, you know, copy that on a separate, um, a separate document or within directly on the notepad of that event and just paste that down. You're going to keep access to uh, those notes if this is something that you wish to do anyways. This is not something that I use a lot, but it's quite cool to have access to those stats um, out of an audio event. So there you go. Those are my five Cubase tips for today. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. All right, my friends, I'm going to see you next time. Bye.